Okay, it looks like we have most people joined. So good morning, everybody. I hope you are well today. You'll have to excuse me in my big old jumper. It's absolutely freezing here, so I'm doing everything I can to keep warm. But today we are running the Getting Started with LifeQI webinar, where we'll be looking at the basic functionality of LifeQI, how to navigate around the platform, and also really concentrating on that project area and how to create and run your quality improvement projects. So a little bit of housekeeping. We do love questions. So if you have anything that you would like to ask or if anything's not quite clear enough, please pop it in the chat or the Q&A box. And I've got my fabulous um, colleague, Lewis, online who will be monitoring the questions. But please do pop anything in. So the video and the audio for participants is muted and turned off. And that is because we are in a webinar, but you can absolutely use the chat or the Q&A function if you would like to ask any questions or let us know anything. OK, so let's get started. So. Life QI. What is Life QI for those of you that are brand new to the system? So Life QI is an online quality improvement software where we bring the people, the tool and the data together to help you run and track your quality improvement work. As I mentioned, we are going to be doing the basic navigation and also looking at how to create and run your projects in Life QI. So first things first. When you have signed up to LifeQI, whether that's via an invitation from a colleague or whether that's by yourself through the self sign up link um, online, this will go through a verification process sent to your organizational admins. They then need to verify that you do work at that organization and that you can have access to LifeQI. Once you've received that verification from your organizational admins, you will then be able to log in and you'll be greeted with the start page, which we can see in front of us here. Now, our start page is unique to us. This is where we're able to access and view everything that we are actively participating in on LifeQI. So let's have a quick look at our start page. At the top here, we can see our name and our job title. If we want to update any of our personal details on LifeQI, we can click on this go to your profile button here, where you'll be able to add in an about you, so a bit of a bio, a profile picture, and also your contact details if you would like to display them on LifeQI. Scrolling down, this is where we're gonna be able to start to see any invitations that we have. So any requests or any invites that we may have on the system. Links to the projects that we are either leading on or we are, or we are a member within. We have the ability to pin specific people within our network to our start page. So it might be that you work with a couple of people quite regularly and you want to add them and have quick, easy access to their profile on your start page you'll be able to access your organizational profile page, any collaboratives or programs of work you're involved in, discussions, any reports you've run and any dashboards that you have, okay? So if you click on any one of these on your start page, that's gonna take you directly through to that particular area of the system. At the top here, we also have a couple of things to highlight. So the first is our notification bell, and this is another place where we can see any notifications. So this might be any invites to projects, any um, notifications say that people have accepted an invite that we sent to join a project, et cetera. We also have this little icon here where we can also access our profile. We can change our preferences and we can also change our password here. Now, in terms of navigation around LifeQI, on the left hand side of the page, we have our main navigation bar, and this is how you can access each individual area of the system. So our projects area, programs slash collaboratives, discussions. So if we're participating in discussions or want to create discussions, reports, any reports we've run will be saved within this area, analytic dashboards, groups, people, you can search for people and you can access your organization through this tab here as well. 
But as I mentioned, the heart and soul and the area that we're really going to concentrate on is the project space. So let's jump in there and take a look. So when we click on our project tab here, it's going to take us through to the project area of LifeQI. When we first enter the project area, you will see that we have some filters on the right hand side of the page here. Now, when you click into the project area, it's always going to automatically filter to my active projects. So these are the projects that either I am a member of, so I've been invited to take part in, or that I am the lead on, so have created myself. We can then scroll down the page and access any one of the projects that we're working in to add in details. What we can also do is we can actually also search projects that are happening within my organization. So say, for example, I was coming in and I wanted to run a quality improvement project on um, sepsis, as an example, but I wanted to see if anybody else in my organization was doing that. What I can do is I can tick my org's projects and I can untick my projects. This is now going to give me a list of all of the projects happening within my organization. I can also type keywords in up the top here, and that's going to narrow down the list for anything um, that has that keyword in it. OK. We do have the ability to really kind of narrow down what we're searching for as well through these this more filters option. We can search by progress score, whether it's an active project completed or cancelled any specific users or service user involvement type. So it's just worth noting that if you do want to drill down on that search, you can absolutely do through do so through your more filters option here. So we're now going to have a look at how to start a project. So first things first, up in the top right corner, we're going to click this start a new project button. This is then going to open up a setup wizard, as I call it, which is going to guide us through the process of creating our quality improvement project. Now, please bear in mind that um, some of your organizations do actually have a governance workflow built into the system. So it might be that some of your project creation process looks slightly different depending on what your organizational setup is, but the steps are still the same. So the first page that you're going to come to is this page here. What is the purpose of our new project? And this is where we have to outline the title and the problem. So you will notice the title box is outlined in red. This means that it is a mandatory field. So we have to create a title in order to progress and save our project. So let's do one on reducing pressure source. We can then um, add in our problem statement if we want to. On the next page, this is where we outline what we're trying to accomplish. So our aim and our rationale. So um, we want to reduce pressure sores by 50% by November 2023. I find it really scary that it's nearly 2023. I don't know about anyone else, but it's a bit weird writing that new date. Um, it's also worth kind of pointing out here that we do have tool tips located throughout the platform. So if when you're going through, you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure what to write here. I'm not sure how to kind of create my aim statement or what to put in my rationale. If we click this little I button here, this is going to give us some really, really, really good pointers. So you'll notice that we've got some um, helpful tips to think about when constructing an aim, aim statement, as well as an example of what a good aim statement might look like and what a bad aim statement might look like. OK, so do take advantage of those little tool tips throughout if you're not quite sure what needs to go in there. We can also add in our rationale here. Now, bear in mind that the um, only the title box is mandatory. OK, so if you're not quite sure what to write in your problem or your rationale at the time being, that's absolutely fine. We can add that in at a later date if needed. We do recommend putting as much detail in as possible. But if you don't know what to put there, don't worry, we can add it later. So jumping onto the next screen, this is now where we kind of decide who's on our project team. 
So who is running this project with me? In order to add members, I click on this invite new members button at the top. I can then search for users that um, I know are on LifeQI. So for example, let me search for my colleague, Lewis. I can then, once I found them, click on their name. We can then assign them a role. So is he just a member? Is he an improvement advisor or my coach on this particular project? I can then decide which permissions he needs to have on this project. So does he just need view rights? Is he just coming in to have a look at what I'm doing? Does he need to actively participate in my project? So add to the driver diagram, add data, run PDSAs. If so, he needs to have edit rights. Or do you want them to have admin controls over your project? So with admin permissions, it's exactly the same as edit so they can actively participate in your project, but they also are able to delete measures, delete charts, delete PDSAs, as well as add new members to that project. So we just wanna decide what level of permission we want our team to have, and then we click add. You'll now notice that Lewis has gone into my pending members list here. So when I save this project, he will get an invite requesting him to join. Now, it might be that when you're adding people, they don't actually have a LifeQI account yet, but that's OK. If we click back on that invite new members button and come down to the bottom, you can click can't find somebody. You can then add in their email address here. And in the same way, you can then click send invite. That's going to add them to the pending members list here. Once you save this project, they'll get an email with a link to sign up as well as join your project. So when we're thinking about kind of the members of our project, it's not just people we can add. So a lot of organizations need to link to their kind of organizational structure. So as an example, um, within Bay Health, we have divisions and I work within the children's division and I need to be able to link my project to the relevant division so we can then see how many projects are happening within each area of the organization. We're also able to link to the relevant areas of the organization by using groups. So for example, I can search for my relevant group here, children's division, and I can then add that to my project in the same way that I added Lewis, okay? Now, not every organization on LifeQI has a group set up to kind of show their organizational structure. So that will depend on how your organization is structured in LifeQI, but it is worth noting. You can also add other organizations to your project. So if you are working on any cross organizational work, you're absolutely able to add their organization to your project as well in the same way that we did. Now underneath we have privacy levels. So this is the privacy of your project. So it will always default to only members can view. And that means only members on my project can view the details. So for example, Lewis, myself, and my organization are able to see the details of my project. We do have the ability to open this up so everybody in the LifeQI Life community can see it. It might be that you don't want to do that yet, but then you run your project and you see some incredible results and you go, yeah, I want to share this with the wider quality improvement community. You can absolutely change those privacy levels at the, as a later date as well. OK, but for now, I'm going to leave that at only members can view. On to the next page is where we categorize our project. So this is where we can link priorities. And again, this is dictated on whether your organization has set up priorities on their profile. So as an example, if I click link priority, I can say this is going to improve patient experience and improve health outcomes. So I'm linking to two of my organizational priorities there. If you click on that and there aren't priorities, it just means that your organization hasn't set any up. We also have a way to add tags. Now, I kind of think of tags as hashtags. So it's just a way to categorize and organize your work. So earlier when we were looking at that search feature on the projects area, we can also search by tags. So I might want to tag my project with the relevant theme of work. So if I add a tag, I can go, right, it's around pressure sores. So I want to 
link a tag of pressure source. Also, you might want to link it to CQC domains as an example, so I can link to CQC domains. And some organizations will have organizational specific tags set up that you'll need to link to your project as well. Again, this isn't a mandatory step, you don't need to do it, but the option is there. On to the next page, super simple, when and where is the project taking place? So we know that this is going to end in November next year, so I can click on my calendar and click my across arrow until I'm in the right month. And I then change my end date. And it might be that it's happening in a specific ward, as an example, so you can then add in that location there. Once we filled all of those out, we're going to click Create Project. That's then going to save our project and take us through to the general page where we can start filling in our details. I'm not sure if my internet's got a bit of a lag. Lewis, can I check in with you that I'm coming across sound wise OK? Yeah, you're coming through perfectly, Sophie. Perfect. OK. Looked like there's a bit of a lag on this side, so I just wanted to make sure. Please let me know if it does get laggy and I can turn my camera off and hopefully that will make it a bit smoother for you all. OK. Great. So we have now created our quality improvement project on reducing pressure scores. And we can now see our general page in front of us. So let's just look at navigation around the general page. First of all, we have, I like to call these my cookie crumbs. And this is where I can see where I am in the system. So I'm within the projects area, I'm within my reducing pressure source project, and I'm on the general page. We have our title at the top. We then have our gla glance bar here, where we can see our project progress score, who's on our project team, whether we have a driver diagram, whether we've got any measures and any PDSAs. Now you'll see this come to life a bit more when we start adding in the detail. You'll also notice that we've got these super helpful kind of hints and tips that show you where you need to go next and give you just a couple of tips of what you should be doing in that area. If you don't want to see them, just click that ignore button. Along the top, we have our tabs and this is how we can get to each area of our project. And then down the bottom, we have our details section. And this is all the information that we have filled out when we were creating our quality improvement project. As I mentioned, we can add or change the details here. So by clicking this edit button, I can then add in my rationale. Here, oh, it would help if I could type today, wouldn't it? Um, we can also add in service user involvement. So whether there's big I or little I as an example, or we can just keep that as none. And we can make any changes to any of this if we need to. Just remember to click save when you have changed those details. So on the glance bar, I like to um, talk about the project progress score in a bit of detail. I think this is a really, really important part of your project. So for those of you that don't know, the project progress score is based on the IHI progress score scale, and it's a scale from 0.5 to 5.0, increasing in 0.5 increments. Now, what the progress score does is it actually is a way for you to show where you are within the life cycle of your project. So as you add more detail, as you start testing changes, as you see improvement, you can update that progress score to reflect where you are. Now, don't worry if you're not familiar with it and kind of don't know which scores relate, like what the meanings of them are. By clicking on that change score here, we can see all of the different scores and we can also then see a little explanation about all of them here. OK. So it might be that um, I'm going to change it to a 1.0 because my charter and team have been established. Once we've chosen the correct score, just simply click change score there. Now, I do go on about this a lot, but it is a super important part. So I recommend that every time you come back into LifeQI, whether that's to update your project or whatever it might be, just check your progress score and make sure that it is showing in the correct stage for where you are within your project. This is gonna help you kind of um, show your progress 
and also it's going to help the organization report on the projects and understand how many projects they have within which life cycle okay so the next place we're going to look at is the driver diagram but while I jump into that, I am just going to stop and take a breath because I've been talking at you for a while and just check in with my colleague Lewis and see if there's been any questions in the chat or Q&A so far. Hi Sophie, thank you. No, we've had no questions come in at the moment. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so driver diagrams. How do we build out our driver diagram in LifeQI? The first thing we need to do is click on the driver diagram tab along the top. And then the next thing we do is click on this edit button here. We can then start to super quickly and easily build out our driver diagram. You will notice that the aim is automatically brought through from the general page. So whatever you add on that general page within that aim section, it's going to pull through to your driver diagram. We now need to think about adding our primary drivers. So all I need to do is click this plus button here. You'll now see that my first primary driver has been created for me. In the same way to um, create another primary driver, I click that plus button. I then have my secondary primary, my second primary driver. And we keep cl clicking, sorry, um, that plus button until we have all the primary drivers that we need. Now we need to build out our secondary drivers. So in the same way we did to add our primary, we click that plus button on the relevant primary box. And then down here, and you can see how quick and easy it is to build our driver diagram. Now change ideas, same as before, we can add multiple boxes to a primary driver or to a secondary driver. So we could have two secondary drivers coming off this primary. And as you can see here, we've got two change ideas coming off the secondary driver. OK, then we can just keep adding. Until. We've done them all. OK, so it's that easy to build out your driver diagram. Once we're done, I'm going to click save. That's then going to save our driver diagram and we can see it there. OK. Now, I always say this, but I am a really, really, really visual learner. I find when I come into my projects and I look at it like this, I find it quite difficult to kind of understand and visualize what's actually happening within my driver diagram. So I tend to color code them. You can absolutely color code yours if you want to. You don't need to. But if you're like me and you like to kind of have it a bit more visual, what we can do is coming back into that edit button here. We can scroll down and we can click this manage colors button. OK, we can then choose different colors that we want to label our driver diagram. There is no right and wrong. You might just want to do it to make it more visual. You might want to do it by a RAG rating. You might want to do it based on different themes or by kind of just separating the primary drivers, second drivers and change ideas. However you want to label it is completely up to you. For this purpose, I'm just gonna label them as per kind of their primary driver, secondary driver or whether they're a change idea. So I choose my colors, I add in the label, then I click done. Now, once I have chosen the colors that I need, this is when I can start going through and color coding my driver diagram by clicking that choose color button. You'll then see that the colors that I've picked out are there waiting for me. OK, do note that if you do this and you don't see any colors, it might be because you haven't chosen those colors first. All right. So just make sure that you do that manage colors step first and then you'll have the colors to choose from. And we can now see that I have a nice color coded driver diagram with my um, key at the bottom. So it's super easy to see what's happening. OK. A couple of other things on the driver diagram. We can expand it if you want a bigger view. 
We can also look at the history. So if we want to be able to see previous kind of iterations of our driver diagram, we can absolutely do that and see how it's changed over time. We also have the ability to download our driver diagram off LifeQI. So by clicking this actions button here, we can export driver diagram and take that off as a JPEG, so as an image off LifeQI. We can then use that um, within a presentation or we can use it as a poster within a staff room, as an example. OK. Great. I can't see that any questions have come in, so I'm going to carry on and go over to the measures and chart section. So the measures and charts section is where we are going to decide what it is we're measuring as part of this quality improvement project and also add in our data so we can visualize that on our charts. Before we can start adding data, we actually need to kind of outline what it is we're measuring. And the way we do that is by clicking that new measure button in the right side of the screen here. So by clicking on that, we're then going to be given a nice little kind of step-by-step um, -step instruction of the details we need to add in in order to create our measure. So the first thing is describing the measure. What's our title? So I'm going to do this as a um, number of patients with pressure sores. OK. Measure type. Is this my outcome, my process or my balance measure? So this is my outcome measure. Now, if you're not sure on which kind of measure type it should be, just highlighting those tooltips again, click on that and it will give you a really nice explanation of what those three measure types are. And then add in our operational definition. So really, this is just in quantifiable terms. What is it you are measuring? OK. On to the next page, how are we going to collect and analyze our data? So the data collection plan. So what data, where's it coming from, who is collecting it, and when are we collecting it, OK? And then probably the most important part of setting up a measure in LifeQI is the next two sections, and that's your chart type and your data collection frequency. So the reason that I say that this is your most important is once you've created these these measures these are the two areas that are not changeable okay so if we started with a run chart and then we wanted to change it to a, a spc chart we couldn't do that within that measure we would need to create a brand new measure so the first thing i'm going to do is kind of go if I don't know is need help choosing a chart little button here, I can then go through and look at all of the different chart types on offer in LifeQI, which is going to give you an explanation of what that chart is, the typical examples and the types of data to capture. So I'm going to come through and say, OK, well, it's not run chart, typical is probably not an I chart, C chart. OK, great. Typical examples, number of pressure sores. So that's a good chart for me to use. So once I've kind of decided which chart, I can then use click use a C chart there, and that's going to choose my chart type. We then need to decide our data collection frequency. So how often are we collecting this data? Are we entering it on a weekly basis, a daily basis, a quarterly basis, a monthly basis? And then we need to choose the correct data collection frequency. From there, we're going to click on the next button. We're then going to we can link drivers if applicable, and we're then going to create our measure. Now we have outlined what it is we're measuring and what data we're capturing. We can now do the fun part and build out our charts and add in our data. OK, now, before I show you that, I'm just going to show you kind of this layout of a measure. So just to point out the cookie crumbs at the top again, so we can see where we are within the system. Within our measure, we can get back to the main measure list here. Then we can see I have two tabs along the top, the charts tab, where we're gonna create our chart in a minute, and also the plan tab here. And this is where all of that information that we've just outlined is detailed, okay? Now, the reason I say this is quite important is if you are um, working with other people on this project, it's a really good idea to have this 
filled out with as much detail as possible so anyone else coming in can come into this plan to go great I know what we're doing within this measure I know what data I need to capture it just makes it a bit easier really so back to the chart tab and let's have a look at adding in our data So to add our data, we click add a chart here. We can then give our chart a name. OK, so I'm going to name this War Day. Um, every time you create a chart, it will automatically be given the name of the measure. OK, so anything else that you add within the chart name is going to show in brackets at the end of that title. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. All right. Now we have two ways of adding data into LifeQI. The first is manual. So say, for example, I am just collect, starting to collect data on this and I don't have any baseline data, I don't have any previous data, and I just need to add in like two months worth of data. What I can do is I can click add a row here. I choose my relevant month and then I add in my count. So how many patients with pressure sores within that month? I then click add a row. And you'll notice that the time period automatically populates for me. And that's because I've chosen the monthly collection frequency. It would do the same for daily or weekly. It would automatically populate the next day or the next week. We can then add in our data for that month. And so on and so forth. OK, so however many data points we have. We can add them in manually like that. We then hit create chart. We can now see that I have my chart here and you'll notice what I said. So it's got within the chart title, it's automatically pulled through the number of the title of the measure and then the title I gave it at the end in brackets. Now to open that chart, I click that little box and LifeQI has automatically created our C chart for us. OK, we can see our um, data table at the bottom and this is our C chart here. If I need to add in any more data, I simply click on this edit button, scroll down to the data table, add a row, add in my data. We click redraw chart and you can now see that my next data point has been added and just make sure we click save. So now the other way that we can add data is we can copy and paste from an Excel. OK. So say, for example, I've been collecting this baseline data for a couple of years in Excel and we're now using LifeQI to capture this data moving forward. But I want to make sure that all of my baseline data is brought over. What I can do is in the same way, I'm going to click add a chart. OK, but I'm now going to add a row, but leave this blank. I'm now going to come over to my Excel spreadsheet where I have all of my data. I'm then going to select my relevant data and copy that. Now, do know that if you are copying and pasting from Excel, it has to be in the same format that LifeQI is expecting. So as an example, if I tried to bring over this data here on the left hand side, that wouldn't work because LifeQI is only expecting a count. But we can see here we have a count and a total. Whereas this data that I've just copied is the same format we will copy over. So now I've highlighted that and I've copied it. I'm going to come back to um, LifeQI and I'm going to right click in that empty time period box and I'm going to paste. That's then going to automatically bring over all of my baseline data for me. Once I've added that, I can hit create chart. And we can now see that LifeQI has created that chart for me. I've got a nice reminder that my data is overdue. Opening that up, we then have our chart. OK, so you can do that with any chart type in LifeQI. You can copy and paste data over as long as the format in Excel is the same format in the data table that LifeQI is expecting. One other thing you'll probably see is that LifeQI will automatically highlight any special cause variation for you within your data. So whether you have any trends, when you, whether you have any shifts, when you, whether you have any outliers, anything like that, it will highlight up here on the chart. And if you hover over it, it will then highlight the data points that it's relevant to. OK. Great. 
A couple more things I want to show you on the charts and then we'll move on to the PDSA section. So we looked earlier about how to add the next data point by clicking edit and then scrolling down to the bottom of your um, data table. But by clicking this actions button here, we can export the data sheet so we can bring all of the data out of our chart into a CSV farm and save that and take that out of, of LifeQI if we want to. We can also export an image. So if we want to be able to take an image of this chart off, same as the drive diagram to display somewhere or to add um, to a presentation or a document, you can absolutely do so by clicking export image here. So coming out of that, I'm then going to come back to my measures list here. And we can now see that I have my first outcome measure here. There is no limit to how many um, measures you can add, OK? So now jumping on to our PDSAs. So we have the ability to run and track PDSAs within LifeQI as well. So by clicking on this PDSA tab, we're then going to click New PDSA Ramp. And in the same way that we had filled in details for our measure, we're going to do that for our PDSA Ramp as well. So what is this P the purpose of this PDSA? So I'm going to OK, what's the aim of this? Very basic information I'm giving right now, um, but just in the interest of kind of the time um, and then which change ideas is it linked to? OK, so you can then start to see that holistic view of your your project. So what is interlinked? What is affecting what? OK, so I'm going to link it to my relevant change idea. On to the next screen, who is responsible for this PDSA? Is it me or somebody else on my project in LifeQI that will be running this PDSA? So it might be Lewis that's responsible for this. When is it taking place? So when is it start? When did it start? So this is starting from the 4th of December. Where, again, if you want to add in a specific location. Next, what is our plan? OK. We then have the ability to add tasks. We can build out our task list if we want to. OK, so it might be that Lewis needs to document each patient. OK, and then you can click Save. I can assign that to the relevant person if I want to. Um, and then we can build this task list up as we go along and we can mark them as completed as and when we need to. Then what is our prediction? And we can then link measures if we like. OK. So we then create that PDSA cycle. What that's going to do, that's then going to take us into our PDSA here. We can see that we're on cycle one out of one. We've got our PDSA tab and our task tab along the top. So you can see here I've got my tasks where I can add more tasks and tick them off as and when they are completed. We can also then on this PDSA tab, we can see our plan. So this is everything we've just outlined when we created it. So if we want to change anything, we can click edit. We can add more detail. We can change the detail. Scrolling down, we can delete the measure if we link the wrong one. Um, we won't delete it, won't delete the actual measure, but we can delete the linking of the measure or we can link a new measure. And then probably the most important part is the do study act area down here. OK, so this is where we're going to detail what happened, how did it compare to my prediction and what are we going to do next? So I can go. So when we're thinking about the what next, it might be that, yes, we saw results, but we think we can get even better results. So we want to adapt this slightly. So within LifeQI, we can ramp PDSAs. So let me show you what I mean. So once we've kind of added all of our details, click save. Now, within this PDSA, it went really well, um, and but we think we can get even better results. So it might be that I want to run a new cycle and actually try getting patients out of bed four times a day. So what I can do is down here, I can click this new cycle button. 
I can then go through the process we just went through, but change it slightly. So, OK, this time I'm going to get patients out of bed four times a day. Do we think that, um, you know, the aim needs to change? Is the same person responsible? Is our plan the same? Do we need to amend any of those details? What's our prediction? Does that need to change or is that the same? And then we create that cycle. Now, what you'll see is we're currently on cycle two out of two. So we have now ramped our PDSA. We can get between the different cycles through this actions button by clicking on previous cycles. Then we can click which cycle we want to have a look at. And there is no limit to the amount of cycles that you run within a PDSA ramp. So just jumping back to the PDSA list here, we'll now be able to see that we have a um, our first PDSA ramp, which change idea it's linked to. And you'll see here with this nice visual how many cycles are within that PDSA. So we can see we've got one completed cycle and one started cycle. And you can tell that because the um, Do Study Act elements of that um, image are grayed out so we can tell it's not completed okay we can also run as many ramps as we want so if you want to come in and add multiple ramps please do so through this new pdsa ramp option here okay so now let's jump back to our general page and have a look at what our project looks like now so you can see that we've started, it's come to life a little bit. We've got a bit more detail in there. Now we've added our driver diagram, our measures and charts and our PDSAs. Now I know that today I've kind of gone through everything in about 45 minutes and it's a lot of information to take in, but hopefully it's been helpful. But we do have resources for you if you need any support when you are using LifeQI. So located throughout the platform, we have this blue get help with link. If we click that on any page in LifeQI, it's going to take us through to the relevant area of our help center. And that's going to give you loads and loads of um, help articles on each specific functionality feature within LifeQI with step by step instructions and also tutor tutorial videos to show you how to do stuff. OK, so as an example, I can't remember how to start my project. I can click on starting a new project here. It's going to give me a tutorial video at the top and then step by step instructions down the bottom. If I just come back to the main help center here. We have help articles for every area of LifeQI. So do use this if you need to refer to any kind of instructions or you need a little bit more support. Now, the other thing we have is this live chat button down here. So the blue speech bubble icon. You can click on that, you can search the help articles, you can create a ticket, but you can also start a live chat. And that will come through to our dedicated help team who are fabulous. They are on um, hand to support you, whether that might be any technical issues or you just need a little bit of guidance, reminder of how to do something, please absolutely utilize that live chat functionality and we'll be more than happy to help. So as I mentioned, it's a little bit of a whiz through of functionality today, but I really hope that you found that helpful. Now we've got about a minute left, so I'm just going to see if there's any questions from anybody or if there's anything anyone would like me to go over in the remaining time. Okay, Lewis, have any questions come through at all? No, we've had no questions, Sophie. Perfect. Okay, no problem. Well, hopefully no questions means that I gave you all the information that you need, but often it comes when you're in the system. So please do reach out to us when you're in if you need any help. And thank you so much for joining today. We really, really appreciate it. It was lovely to see you all. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And yeah, take care, everybody.